Welcome back everyone. Today we're creating another segment of the voxel board and in this lesson we'll be exploring roaming vectors. We'll do our best to ensure that you understand the terminology, techniques, and processes that are involved in the roaming vector creation. If you feel a little lost or aren't certain about a particular technique or term, you can rewatch that segment. However, if you're still requiring additional assistance, you're welcome to leave a comment here, one in the landmark forum, or you can contact Draconius directly. Okay, so for the next scale for our boards, we're going to go and move into roaming vectors. Now what roaming vectors is, is the vector, which is the line that connects between the two voxels, is allowed to bypass its um, home voxel's location and go out to the neighbor's voxel location. And you can see that in this reactor I place, it's got all the handles are colored. And if you look at the pink handle here, you'll see that it comes out another full voxel over to uh, the right of you. And that's a roaming vector. And what we'll do is I got a bigger demonstration of this inside the grid. It's a huge demonstration model that we built, our spider built for us. And uh, I'll show you in that grid exactly what that looks like. Okay, so here is the demo model. Uh, you have to imagine that we blew up that reactor uh, to expose what it looks like inside the grid of the game, the voxel grid. The glass uh, vector lines there are the um, air voxel grid that would leave that reactor, so the spots that aren't filled. And the colored vector lines, you'll see, mark out the cubes, the handles of that reactor. Now, if you look at the pink one, you'll see that I've demonstrated that vector line coming out and it joining up to the neighbor's far voxel location, which would match the one that it had uh, left at its home position. So in the exact same location of its neighbor's voxel. And then it can use that voxel and its rules, which are the standard rules of the voxel, that it can go a half out from there. So I want to show this demonstration model first, just to show you um, what a roaming vector is all about. And it's now going to be what we're going to build a scale around. And what we'll do now is I'm going to just get this cleaned up and we'll get on to making the first roaming vector scale for our board. Okay, so to get started to build this board, what we're going to need to do first to get, get our default shape for our uh, center number five location in a roaming position. So the first roaming position, and I'm going to break the roaming into two categories. Uh, today's lesson is about category one, and category one deals with moving the default voxel over exactly one voxel location to be right beside where the original one would be. So I'm, I'll show you that to you right now. Now, the good thing is, is that SOE actually with the generic shapes have provided us with that um, roaming vector default in our shapes. And I'll show you what I mean here. What you want to do is take out your add tool and then the menu above your add tool comes up and you're going to want to click on the circle or the C, which is your shape menu. If you just press C, that just toggles between your cube and your sphere. But if you go click on the menu, you can open it up and you'll get four additional shapes. Now for counting them left to right, we got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six shapes, right? Number five and six are the cube in the sphere. So number two and number four are the shapes that have the roaming vector. And both those shapes are actually the identical roaming vector. What you're gonna do is click on either one, your choice. And when you bring it into the world, you're gonna want to, um, Control click, so go into tweak, raise it up into the air, make sure it's not touching any other voxels, and bring it in. Reason being, there's a bug that if this shape comes in and you actually place it against another voxel, it doesn't actually give you the exact shape that is intended. For some reason, the bug allows it to change its shape. Also, if you bring it in, don't rotate it. Bring it up as it's uh, set into the game. For some reason, if you rotate it to another direction, it'll also change its shape. It's just bugs that I hope they work out down the road, but for this lesson, just make sure that you bring it into the game, raise it up, and then place it, and then you'll be good. And then what we're going to do is now create a, a quick reactor. So you're going to have to go back into your add tool. Like the way, way I do is go back to my square, go three by three box, control tweak, bring it into the air, place it, use my selection tool, and I'll cut away the center slices.
and then grab that piece with the selection tool and put it into the reactor. And then once it's in the reactor, what I want you to look for, I'll just get out and get a different color here, is this handle right there. And if you notice with that handle, its corner goes past the halfway mark of the center voxel that we put in there. That right there tells you it's a roaming vector. Because normally a voxel cannot pass the halfway mark when moving its corner through that voxel. So now that we've isolated the roaming handle, what you're going to want to do next is make a closed reactor. What I mean by that is imagine our reactor when it's uh, up there right now, that's opened up where a piece can be inputted into the center of it. Now if we took all eight handles and you envision them closing up, squishing the center piece to nothing, that would be considered a closed one. To make one, all you have to do is bring out your add tool, put it to two voxels, hold down control, raise it up, into the air and then place it and it's a two by two by two and that's basically eight voxels put together and we call it a closed reactor. Now that we have our closed reactor up in the air what you're going to do is go and select that white handle off the reactor that has the roaming vector location stored in it. We're going to copy that and what we're going to do is go and paste it into the top corner of the closed reactor in the same location as it would be in the open reactor. What that has done is marked all the other seven uh, voxels in that closed reactor with the position of that white voxel that we just put in there. Okay, and now what you want to do is go in and recolor your closed reactor. I'll make it easier for the next step. There's my white color. What I'm going to do too is uh, color the center voxel in that reactor because that will be our default voxel when we're done. Now what I'm going to do is go and copy each of the other seven locations and paste them over top of the exact location that they would represent in the open reactor. And it's important to remember that you use the actual corners for each part. Because I remember when we were doing this uh, on what if I do this, I had actually tried to do it with just one of them all together. Is that, and all that plays a part, right? That does. Because each one is storing uh, the location at a certain uh, distance away from the first one that we put in. And if you just use one piece, then you're just putting that exact location in all the locations. Then plus with this technique, it is about opening up the closed reactor. So you want to uh, do that, which will make you a perfect default voxel shape when it opens up. There we go. So as you can see now, we have a perfect voxel shape, but is it offset from the center location? exactly one spot over. So it's inheriting the visual part of the voxel is in the next neighboring location. But its home location is still in the center of that reactor and will always be there. With roaming vectors, that's the one thing you always have to consider. Is the, I consider it the home location and then you have, or the ownership, and then you have the visual, which is where it would be pushed off to. And we're pushing it off exactly one. So this is our primary piece to make our basic uh, scale for our board. Okay, so like our basic board here, uh, we're gonna make the bottom basic scale. So to use the, and we're gonna use basically the same technique, except for a couple of additional things and that's where the putty's gonna come in handy. So we're gonna copy this piece out of the reactor. <laughs> Thank you. 
and you're going to set up five of them just like we did on the first standard set put your selection box over the fourth one which would be beside your default starter one at the far right grab your smooth tool and target number four once and you'll notice there's a little piece of voxel down there so what you'll see here is there's that visual voxel came in from underneath and you would think that that was a part of the voxel we're working on but it's not it's in the visual location but it's an inverted voxel that happened there so what we got to do and i painted it to show you what i'm talking about there what we need to do is we're going to select that we're going to copy it we're going to then paste it on itself but we're going to negative paste so that's holding down the f key when we're on top of it and clicking that gets rid of it uh, we do that to clean up that area so that when we go to smooth again, um, that's not going to anchor the, the piece. Um, you can save those if you want in future courses where we'll talk about inverted voxels. Now what I'm going to do is go to my templates. So in your templates, grab out your putty. Um, what we're going to do is go in and putty in the ownership location. So that's where you had selected it to smooth it. And it'll bring back in the visual at the number four shape. And guys, I want to emphasize that, again, because of the radius and the way the, the pasting looks, what he means is to put your um, putty voxel above that position that you currently see occupied. So you're going to paste above that, and then you're going to get that little cube below it. Correct. And then what we're going to do to make uh, step three, like the third voxel there, I'm going to copy number four. I'm going to replace number three. It was just a marker there, a position holder for the set to be made on. This just speeds up the process so you don't have to do it twice. And what we're going to do again, get our selection tool out, target the location above the visual, use our smooth tool, smooth it down. We're going to go down, select the inverted voxel, copy it, go up, negative paste it on itself get rid of it clean up that area and then we're going to go grab our putty voxel out of our template and we want to emphasize when he says um, negative paste that does not mean to delete and there's our number three and again go into our number three copy it replace number two the bottom row all the micro roaming vectors the basic row I'm going to copy them and what I'm going to do over here is I'm just going to replace this set on the bottom just to show you guys or put it beside it so I can show you guys how similar both the sets are from the standard voxels behind it 
to the Roman ones in front of it on the scale that we're building here. They're identical pieces except for the roaming, the selection box is above where the ownership is. And the thing that was uh, interesting to grasp is ownership being, when he mentions ownership, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can visually see it. Ownership can be just the fact that something is in space, you know, not visible to the naked eye, as it were. Exactly. It's, it's where the data is still stored. That's its home location. So it's where the ownership of all that visual information is that we see. The visual information can be separated and pushed away from the home location. And that's what we're doing there with these uh, sets. And they're quite handy with building. So you can do uh, intersect other voxels with the roaming voxel so that you're not creating any kind of uh, connection point that will create undesirable artifacting. Okay, now to make uh, 6, 7, 8, 9, just like the basic set we made for the standard voxels, we're going to use a reactor with the smaller pieces. So we're going to go and pick number 4. I'm going to go and copy that. The only thing now with this reactor that we got to keep in mind is we're not going to put the visual part into the handle. we got to put the ownership of the voxel into the handle of the reactor. And watch the corner here closest to me facing you, Buzz. See how that pulled it down, the visual? Right, and, and are, you placing, are you placing those directly into the, uh, uh, the uh, squares? Yeah, I'm replacing those handles. But remember, it's the ownership that's going to replace the handle, not where the visual is. If I tried to just put the visuals in there, that wouldn't affect the reactor in the same way. All right, guys, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to illustrate what Draconius has just done from my end so that you can see the tool action. So we're going to select this home area here and control C to copy. Then I'm going to move it to the home location over here in the reactor. And then I'm going to paste. And then the final result should look like that. It's been placed in the home ownership area. So we'll just finish up here by placing that number four in all the other seven locations of the reactor. You'll know that you're in the right spot because of uh, it will replace that voxel. If it doesn't replace it, then you know you're not in the right spot. Number six, Fox and Al for the scale. And what we'll do is just now repeat with number three and the rest of them, two and one. Number seven.
So in other words, it doesn't really matter what particular order you do them in, because you'll eventually well, achieve the same result. <laughs> yeah, I, I just missed one there. So even, you know, I make mistakes. There's no big <laughs> secret there. So what we have now is the uh, six, seven, eight, and nine, the opposite of our one, two, three, and four. So what we'll do is just make a new board starting with that. So I'm just going to quickly clean this up. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. I'm going to place it in the bottom row here. We're going to keep the same style to the board as we did before. That way it just is easier to read and make sense. You can do yours the way you want, but that's what we'll follow with the class. And then because these are roaming uh, voxels, what I like to do with them is go take another color. And right above where the ownership is behind it, I color the voxel on the board to represent that's where, oops, got that one. Uh, where the ownership is in comparison to the voxel in front of it. That way when you go to select it, you know, to have your selection tool in that vicinity to copy the visual below it. Now to make the aligned roaming, what we're going to do is we'll take default number five from the board here. Copy that out. And what we're going to do with this one, just like the technique what we did on the original alignment of a voxel, is we're going to stack this straight up on itself. And give yourself some good space so that you got an area to select in the center of it. We're going to leave the edges um, alone for the smoothing part. Now, because we use the roaming, the ownership actually goes one higher than the visual. So you just have to select to the top of the visual. And at the bottom, you have to come up from the one from the ownership box. So you're looking something like that. And now I come one less on the top just to make more of a visual handle. And I'll take the smooth tool. Oh, my selection box is hanging a little bit. Just give me a second. There we go. So smooth it once. Then Go in with your uh, selection tool and grab a center, just one center box out of it. And that will be your number four of your line set. Okay, so I've pulled out number four here, put it up against uh, default number five. And what we're going to do now is just continue on. I'm just going to select this middle area again on our stack. Going to go with the smooth tool. Smooth it again another time. Select the center, and that's our number three. Again for number two, select and smooth, copy the center. One last time for number one. There we go. We have the lower end set of our aligned roaming vector. And this is the vertical set. And we actually have, with the roaming set, we can make another set, which is the horizontally aligned. Okay. So for this set, though, we'll just continue on with this uh, vertically aligned set. And we're going to make number six, seven, eight, nine again. And as usual, we're going to need. Uh, reactor. I'm just going to break out another one here. I'm just going to put a default 
uh, number five in from the set. And then I'm going to take number four. And now what we could do actually with the align set, we actually can just use our um, vector locations of the reactor as well to align the shape down in those corners. So what you do is put the ownership between your two upper and lower boxes. Or you can also, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can replace your corners. And there we go, that's number six. Copy that out, add it to our scale. And just continue on with piece number three. Piece number seven. There's our number eight. I'll copy number one. And there's our number nine. So there we go. We have our line set right here. Okay, so now that we're done with the set, I recolored the ones on the high side there. And I'm going to cut that out. I'm going to go put that above this set here. And again, go and take that same color you used below. And go and paint those ownership locations on that side. That gives you a nice visual of where those are comparison to them. Okay, and then now we're going to go for that top row with a stretch row. And just like before, we're going to use the bottom row and pop the whole row, bring it out, and put one up into the air. Make sure don't move your mouse when you start this. So we're going to place, you're going to scroll down one, you're going to hold down the up key and do a negative paste. Then mirror and go up two and hold down the up key and do a negative paste. And what you have is the stretched row like we did the original set. We're going to copy that. We're going to go and place it on the top here. And there we go, we have the stretch foaming set at the top. So that will be it for today's lesson. There will be a uh, part two to this lesson and we'll show you, it's just to take the um, center row and we showed you the vertical line one today. I'm going to show you the horizontally aligned one in the, in the next lesson. Just so that you see the other uh, way of doing that, which includes an additional technique. We know this lesson was a lot to process. However, we felt it was necessary to put the entire segment into one session. This way it had a level of continuity that could be viewed in its entirety. We're glad you guys are enjoying these lessons and we appreciate all the feedback. Be sure you're following us on Twitter and check the published section below for times and places to catch Draconius giving live lessons. Thanks for your support, guys. The likes, the subscriptions have been fantastic. I'm getting even closer to my goal of 1,000 subscribers. You guys make all this possible and I genuinely appreciate all your support.